Hey friends, welcome to Power Coat Music. In this presentation, we're going to do a quick overview of the Yamaha DM3D 22 channel digital mixer. Well, the economic digital mixer wars are heating up with the release of the Yamaha DM3 consoles. We know that Yamaha is no stranger to the digital mixing market with several models currently available. These include the TF model series, the QL model series, and the CL model series. So with all of this, why should we be interested in the newer and latest DM3 model series? And along with that, what makes them different from the other Yamaha digital mixers? Well, <laughs> To address that question in this presentation, we're going to check out the Yamaha DM3's features, technical specifications, top panel controls, and rear panel. Also, it's important to note that the DM3 is currently available in two different model types. These include the DM3S, which is the standard model hence the S, with a suggested retail price of $1,699. The second is the DM3D. Now this model includes Dante networking functionality, hence the D, with a suggested retail price of $1,999. And this model is the primary focus of this overview. Dante functionality is a combination of software, hardware, and network protocols that delivers uncompressed, multi-channel, low-latency digital audio over a standard Ethernet network using Layer 3 IP packets. So with all of this, sit back, relax, grab your tea and coffee, and stay with me. We have a lot to cover, and you are not going to want to miss it. Let's check out some of the Yamaha DM3D digital mixers features. This is Yamaha's most compact Dante compatible mixer yet. DM3 produces high quality 96 kHz sound using 16 analog inputs and 8 outputs with low latency. DM3 series comes equipped with two high quality multi effects processors featuring 18 types of effects, including Rev HD and Rev R3. Scene presets are also available for a variety of applications that use the DM3 series for mixing, making setup quick and easy. The DM3 series condenses features needed for streaming inside a compact housing. This, this unit basically are, is equipped with analog I.O. and USB terminals and that makes it possible to input audio to the DM3 series and transmit the mixed audio directly to a computer using streaming software. The Dante equipped DM3 is ideal for standalone operation as well as for use as part of a larger streaming system featuring mixing consoles. Now for example using two DM3 units allows the engineer to input the audio transmitted by Dante for on-site and streaming. Or you can use two different mixing consoles for the project. Remote control functionality is also a key cornerstone feature of the unit. The DM3 editor software allows users to control and save menu settings. DM3 stage mix can control the DM3 series from on stage and the monitor mix software uh, allows each performer to adjust their own monitor. That's pretty cool. DM3 consoles also team well with digital audio workstations, better known as DAWs. Now, DAW operations such as volume adjustment, play, and stop can be executed using the console's faders and buttons as physical controllers for smooth operation while arranging. Both DM3 models, the D and the S, support multi-track recording via USB to host. Two-track recording is also possible using a USB memory stick and the USB connector on the front of both consoles. DM3 series are bundled with downloadable 
Cubase AI software from Steinberg. The M3 series are also bundled with downloadable VST rack elements. A plugin uh, hosting software package is also available from Yamaha. Let's move on to the Yamaha DM3D digital mixers technical specifications. On your screen now you see a chart with the DM3D and the DM3S standard listed. Now the DM3D again has Dante functionality and the DM3 standard does not. There's a $400 difference in price between the two. The DM3D is more. So if you don't need Dante functionality, the DM3 standard may be the unit for you. So I'm showing you both just to let you see how similar both units are um, with, again, the DM3D having the Dante and the DM3 standard not having it. And we're going to start with the outline and the leftmost column, which is the mixing capacity. We're going to go down row by row and take a look at the uh, detailed specifications for the unit. Again, with the mixing capacity, uh, we're looking at the input channels are the same between both units, along with the mixed buses, the matrices, the stereo buses, the effects buses, and the Q buses. Let's move on to our general specifications. In our I.O. connectors group on your left hand side, we have in our first two rows our analog input and analog output, uh, which are going to be the same for both units. Below that we have our Dante connectors, which of course the DM3D has Dante, the DM3S does not. So with our DM3D we have two Ethernet uh, connectors with a uh, primary and secondary port. Below that we have our network, USB to host, USB to device our phones and DC specifications, which are going to again be the same for both units. If I'm going too fast for you, just hit the pause button uh, for this presentation and check out the specifications in detail and then continue at your leisure. Next, we have our user interface, which is a touchscreen user interface, and that's going to be the same for both units, along with the recording and playback, PC, Mac, and USB storage device specifications. Let's now actually move on to the sampling frequency rate, which is going to be the same again for both units, along with the signal delay, frequency response, total harmonic distortion specifications, our hum and noise level, equivalent noise input, and a residual output noise. Now, all of these specifications, it's important to note, come directly from Yamaha. So uh, we wanted to make sure we had everything for you and it was as accurate as possible. Moving on, we have our dynamic range, crosstalk, power requirements, and power consumption, which again are going to be the same for both of the units. Now with this, the dimensions, which is going to be your width, height, and depth are going to be the same, along with the net weight and the included accessories as well. Under that, we have our uh, operating temperature for both units, along with the recommended storage temperature. Now, we'll discuss the Yamaha DM3D digital mixers, top panel controls. First, we have the display. The display is operated by directly touching the screen. Of course, it's a touch screen. And by using the touch and turn knob, you can also make fine adjustments of parameters on the unit. It can also be operated via touch, double touch, as well as using your finger for sliding, swiping, and pinching in and out. Moving on, we have the touch and turn knob. This is used when adjusting the selected parameters. After that, we have the SEL, QUE, and ON buttons. Each channel includes these three controls that are used to select, stage, or enable functionality. Moving on, we have the channel strip section. This part corresponds to the channel module on a traditional analog mixer. It operates the main parameters of the currently selected channel. Moving on, we have the main section. 
This section is primarily used for operating stereo channel parameters. After that, we have the user defined keys section. These keys are for operating functions assigned by a user according to their specific needs. Some commonly used functions such as tap tempo and bookmarks are assigned as defaults. Moving on, we have the home key. This key returns to the home screen. After that, we have the fader bank section. This switches the allocation of faders on the top panel. After that, we have the phone section. This is used for monitoring the signal that's selected with monitor select or the cue signal via the headphones. Last but not least is the USB connector. This of course is for connecting to USB memory. Finally, let's check out the Yamaha DM3D digital mixers rear panel. First, we have the Omni Out jacks. These are XLR 332 type output jacks for outputting analog audio signals. These jacks are primarily for outputting mixed channels and stereo channels. Next, we have the input jacks. These are for, of course, connecting mics and musical instruments. Channels 1 through, or should I say inputs, 1 through 12 are XLR 3x31 type input jacks. And inputs 13 to 16 are combo jacks compatible with both XLR type and TRS phone plugs. After that, we have our power switch, which is self-explanatory. Moving on, we have the DC input connector for connecting, of course, the included power adapter. Now, one thing also to keep in mind is this has a EEE function, which is energy efficient ethernet function. This technology reduces energy consumption of internet devices when the network traffic is light. It's also called green ethernet. Moving on, we have the USB to host connector. USB type B connector is the basic type that we have here and the product functions also as an up to 18 in, 18 out, 96 KHZ, 32-bit audio interface by connecting to a computer via USB cables. It also allows control of DM3 series and remote control of DAW software by USB MIDI. Moving on, we have the Dante primary and secondary connectors. These connectors are, of course, for Dante audio network connections. Last but not least, we have our network connector. This is an RJ45 connector for connecting to a computer. Well, friends, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days, and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also, leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know what you think about this content. And check us out on Facebook. Instagram, Spotify, and TikTok. While you're here, please check out some of the other music and videos and especially the playlist because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really do appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.